Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thanks for checking out the video. And if you're already subscribed and returning, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And welcome back. This video is going to consist of a description of another pretty limited production piece in my collection. And I'll end it with a couple of short clips from a range trip testing out a couple of different home loads. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first thing we want to do is make sure that our firearm is safe. And for those that are freaking out that I had something in the chamber, relax. It's just a snap cap. It's not actually live ammunition. So now we can verify our pistol is safe. So the company was called Daytonics. And Daytonics was in business for a combined total of about 20 years. From 1976 to 88, the company was based in Washington State and sold sometime in the 87 to 88 time frame and relocated to Phoenix, Arizona in 1989, which then ceased operations in 92. In 2004, a new company emerged called Daytonics USA, and that was located in Georgia, and they manufactured firearms from 2004 to 2007, and that was the last time their pistols were produced. There is currently a Daytonics company, uh, but they have absolutely no affiliation with the original, and their focus is not on the 1911 platform, but they do offer a variety of different firearms for the European market and are actually headquartered in the Czech Republic. So as for Daytonics history, they were known for their development of the first commercially available subcompact 1911. And their success in that area led to their foray into high-end, full-size 1911s of the day. They were obviously very innovative. Their pistols had a reputation of having tight tolerances, being extremely accurate, and just all around very well made. They also made a compact pocket series of pistols, uh, small semi-automatics called the Pocket 9 and Pocket 380 respectively. But they were only manufactured for about a year and that was between 85 and 86. Now this is obviously not one of the subcompact models. This is the Daytonix Scoremaster and it's chambered in 45 ACP. Now this model, along with others, were also available in a proprietary cartridge called the 451 Daytonix Magnum, as you can see on this brochure here. And the difference between the two is that the 451 was basically an elongated 45 ACP, and the parent case was actually the 45 Winchester Magnum that had just been shortened. So it was pretty much a high velocity 45 ACP, but not quite the wrist snapper that the 45 Win Mag is. So for comparison, a 45 ACP. 180 for 185 grain target slug like you'd find in the Winchester white box target ammunition has a velocity of around 910 feet per second. The 45 ACP plus P has an approximate velocity of 1100 feet per second. And the same slug from the 451 is running a little over 1350. So there is a pretty significant difference. Uh, the 45 Win Mag is a different animal altogether. Uh, required a lengthened uh, magazine well uh, to be able to accept the longer cartridge. So the 451 was kind of the bridge between the two uh, in a power factor without having to alter the grip size of a standard 1911. So, so anybody that knows me personally knows that I'm a huge film fanatic and obviously I have a big interest in firearms. So a lot of firearms that are in my collection were actually purchased solely because they were featured in films or TV shows, uh, much like The Terminator, uh, Dirty Harry, Jurassic Park, Death Wish 3, Miami Vice, The A-Team, etc. And this pistol is no exception. And for some of the older folks out there, you might uh, recognize this picture that I'm going to post and the saying I use a factory accurized Daytonics 45 Scoremaster 
It's got the extended barrel for the silencer, short hammer fall, and I load with 230 grain full patch rounds. It's primarily for stopping power. For those that don't know, that is a quote from the character Tackleberry as he's explaining his carry piece to his partner uh, Kathleen Kirkland, played by Colleen Camp, in the 1985 movie Police Academy 2. Uh, Tackleberry was expertly portrayed by David Graff in all seven of the Police Academy films. Unfortunately, he died of a massive heart attack in 2001 at the age of 50. Uh, but to me, his legacy lives on in film and in my collection. And as I mentioned earlier, there were some innovative designs uh, that were included with some of the Daytonics pistols. And one being that the ejection port was actually lowered and lengthened. Uh, the trigger is adjustable. Daytonics also omitted the need for a barrel bushing and utilizes a bull barrel design. And some models, like this one, also feature a recessed crown. Um, internally, there was some more attention to detail concerning fitment and polishing. Um, more than other manufacturers and it even came from the factory with interchangeable sights. Uh, the black one is obviously installed and it also came with the white one and the orange. So all of these features and more uh, were previously not available on factory built guns. Uh, they were actually some of the modifications made by custom gunsmiths for increased reliability in self-defense and competition guns at the time. Uh, I might do another video showing the disassembly process as it's a little different than a standard 1911. And I might include like my cleaning procedure and I'll, I can provide some more details in that one. So all in all, I'm very happy to have this one. Uh, being a Washington State gun, I know it was built between 76 and 88, and the fact that it looks almost new, uh, it has the brochure, all three sights, and the box, it is a very welcome addition to my collection. And it actually has a pretty early serial number on it, so uh, I would imagine that it's probably a 1980 or pre-1980 gun, so that's also a bonus to me. So, it's got a hell of a spring in it. I'm not sure exactly how many pounds it is, but uh, I know that the Combat Master, which is the subcompact model, had uh, a dual spring system, and the replacement on it, I believe, is rated for either 23 or 24 pounds. So it is, it is pretty significant. Uh, this one, I don't think, is quite that high but uh, I would imagine it's probably pretty close to 20. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed my ramblings of uh, some of the details concerning this firearm. Um, like I said, there's just a couple of range clips coming up, nothing crazy, but I hope you enjoy them. Also gonna include a link below to the scene from Police Academy 2 featuring this pistol that I had referenced earlier. And, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up and all that stuff. And if, feel free to let us know if there's something else you'd like to see. Remember that your Second Amendment rights are always under attack. Every gun law is 100% unconstitutional. So, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.
Yeah. That's what uh, that's what the five grains of bullseye. So we'll see if these run. Yeah. It seems to reject that pretty well. Well, we'll see. Good. 